right, welcome back everybody. Um, we're going to continue basically where we left off, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the different types of tests that we can do with if statements. Um, I think that it's going to be one of the more important lessons that we do. So uh, let's jump right in. Uh, I'm going to start by deleting pretty much everything I had there. And just starting off with the skeleton that we've been using from the start. And I'm just going to show you a few different things. Um, when we use if statements, they can be used in a lot of different ways. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to declare two variables. So we'll say a equals 1 and b equals 2. Um, you can declare variables separated by commas if you haven't noticed me doing that up to now. So when you're using an if statement, it's always an if followed by a set of parentheses, followed by a bracket. Well, you don't have to have the brackets, but it's good style. Now, inside these parentheses, you have to have some kind of statement that can be true or false or something along those lines. So in this case, say if I wanted to check to see if A equals B, you would assume that it would be like that. But unfortunately, this equal sign is what's known as the assignment operator. And the assignment operator literally means A is now equal to B. The way that we should properly check that if, you know, if A is equal to B is two equal signs. Uh, it's known as a boolean, uh, a boolean equal to. Booleans are what all of these are going to be. It's going to be less than, greater than, equal to. I should comma separate these so you guys can just see them. Um, less than, greater than, equal to. And then there's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to not equal to. Um, those are going to be the main ones right there. There's a few more that you can use and we'll kind of talk about that uh, in later chapters. But for now those are the big ones. Um, less than, uh, greater than, equals, less than, you know, so on. Okay, so before the end of the video I'm going to try to make one of each of those. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just add more variables. C equals 3, D equals 4, F equals 5. You know who just left out D, right? Uh, F equals 6, G equals 7. Okay, good enough. All right, and then we'll do, uh, you know, we'll do G equals 1 just for the sake of it. Okay, so if a equals b, which it doesn't, 1 does not equal 2, we're going to... I'll just leave it as null. Null means that I'm not doing anything. Um, you technically don't even need to put anything there. I just like putting a comment so I know that I'm treating it as null. So, okay. Equals is done. Um, we'll do if b is less than c, which it is, we're going to do c out b is less than c, or in this case, uh, b less than c. Now, just a quick note, this endl is the same thing as a backslash n in the uh, episodes leading up to this. It's the same idea, it's the same number of characters you're using, so I just tossed that in there. Okay, um, every if can have what's known as an else statement, which means that there's a statement that corresponds to it. Else's are technically optional. Again, it's good style to always have a matching else to an if. Um, in this case, 
just ignore all these warnings to the side. It's because I don't have any type of, you know, uh, thing there. So I'm just going to do that so only that one line is messed up. Else we'll just do C out C is less than B. And we know that's actually not the case. Okay, and let's see. So I've used less than, I've used equal to, now I need to use greater than. So I'll do um, if D is greater than C, which it is, C out backslash N, D greater than C. I'm not going to output the actual numbers again. It's just going to turn into too much typing before the end of this. Um, what I'm going to do for this next one is I'm going to do a less than or equal to. So I'm going to do if A is less than or equal to G. Now since both of these are set to 1, this will return true. So C out. Uh, we're just going to say a equals g, because in that case it's true. Um, it's not what we're testing for, so I guess I will do less than or equal to g. Um, greater than or equal to would have to be the same thing, so I'll do uh, f is... no, if f is greater than or equal to g out f is bigger than g. And here I am forgetting all my backslash n's. I'm kind of a rebel. Um, we need style. Okay, and lastly, not equal to. Um, not equal to is pretty easy to use. Same idea. If, let's just say g is not equal to f c out g is not equal to f or more realistically g is not equal to f Okay, and now, with all that done, this big, long, complicated if statement from hell, we're going to run it, take a quick peek at what happens, and everything went kind of how we expected. B is less than C, exactly how we planned. So 2 is less than 3. D is greater than C, which you know, 4 is greater than 3, that makes sense. A is less than or equal to G, which uh, they're equal, so that works. Um, what else? F is bigger than G, um, and in this case, of course, we can see 6 is greater than 1, or greater than slash equal to 1, and G is not equal to F. Um, I should have had a backslash n here. As you can see, it showed up on the same line. And so, as a result, it then says 1 is not equal to 6, which is the values of g and f, respectively. Um, so hopefully that just kind of shows you what each one is actually testing. Um, there are more complicated things you can do. Um, you can use... let me check our time real quick. Um, we're at about nine minutes now, so I have a few more minutes. Okay. Now, if we were to... I'm going to show you a quick example of what's known as a nested if. Um, every if statement has two sides that you can go to, an if or an else. Now, you don't always have to specify an else. It's good style to, but you don't have to. Now, let's assume that we have something that's like... Um, we're going to change this. And this is just going to be a real quick example. Um, sales equals zero. And then we're going to see out enter sales. And apparently I'm having issues. There we go. 
Okay, see in sales. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a large nested if. Uh, or well, as large as time will really allow for. And we're going to do if sales is greater than 500, um, see out, let's just say, good job. Okay. And then what we're going to say is, hmm, actually, you know what? Let's do less than 500. And we're going to say, needs improvement. And so then we're going to go to this and we're going to make an else. And we're going to say else if to kind of show that this is nesting to something else. Sales is greater than 500 and sales is less than 1000. This is the and operator. That means that these two conditions both have to be true. That's very important to keep in mind. Okay, so um, we're going to say see out good work. Again, very simple. Then we're going to do another else if. We're going to say sales is greater than 1000 and sales is, let's say, less than 2500. We're going to say see out great work. And we're going to do one more, which is just going to be an else, which means that this person has sold more than 2500 because that's the only condition we're not testing for. We're going to say see out amazing work. Keep it up. So, okay. Oh, and I forgot a semicolon here. So let's uh, ignore that. Now you'll notice I'm not putting uh, backslash ends on these, which I suppose I should because we're accepting the C and we're going to need to do it on a different line. Otherwise you wouldn't need a, a backslash N on these because they are not, only one of these should print. So okay, let's try this. We're going to run this twice. Okay, so enter sales, 400, needs improvement. Damn, I'm not good at this. Um, let's try 1,221. And great work. So that's what that is. And lastly, we're going to try 2,750. Amazing work. Keep it up. So that right there is just a quick example of a nested if and the kind of power that you can have with them. Hopefully this video has helped you better understand what you can do with uh, ifs and nested if statements, and hopefully, if nothing else, we can uh, start to progress into somewhat more difficult programs based on you know this little bit of knowledge that we've gleaned from this video. If you need any help whatsoever, please let me know in the comments below or send me a message. Um, feel free to subscribe, comment. Anything else? Have a good night.